Good evening, and welcome to another episode of 12 Faces of Sober Speaks podcast. This is episode number 37. We have another wonderful guest. This guy is very, very, very outspoken, very transparent as far as his recovery process, and I definitely wanted him to come on. The good thing is that we were supposed to do this before he took a trip, but I definitely wanted to be able to hear more about his trip, especially being from California. So it's always good to, you know, get someone's experience about that, you know, just being out there in that Cali sunshine. So we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. But before we jump into that, um, as you can see in the background, I got some congratulations balloons. So 12 Faces of Sober actually hit number one on Amazon in two different categories. It was uh, number one um, for alcoholism and number one for a uh, short, I think a short read. And that was for 48 hours. So that was dope. And the, the good thing is that like, I actually wrote that in my book was that that was a goal of mine was to achieve it. So to be able to do it, wonderful, great experience. And I, I look forward to what is gonna bring me in the future. As well as, uh, like I said, you can shop that book, 12 Faces Sober on Amazon. All you gotta do is type in, 12 Faces of Sober, and you should be able to find it, as well as you can shop the merch, 12facesofsober.com. I have uh, pretty much the fall, winter line, uh, camo merch, got t-shirts, I have hoodies, I got sweatshirts, I have workout shorts for the ladies, tights for the ladies, uh, tank tops, a little bit of everything. So I would love the support, like I said, that's on 12facesofsober.com as well as uh, I will be meeting with a publishing company for the children's book that I'm writing on uh, me playing baseball in San Diego. And as well as I'm still working on my army book. And let me tell you, to go back into that and, and dig up all these crazy moments, especially for drinking, it's taken me a little bit longer because I wanna be accurate with the information that I'm sharing. And it's not so much about the dirt that I saw it with other people, it's the dirt that I <laughs> contributed to. So uh, again, this gentleman I've been following, I would say roughly uh, two, anywhere between two to four months. If it, it might be a little bit longer, but he's, he's definitely a fixture in the sober community. He's very outspoken. I love his message. He's very positive. He doesn't mind telling you his business. And, and, and that's one thing that I value in this recovery process is that you have to not only be honest with yourself, but you have to be honest with what the, the message that you're conveying. And this man definitely has it. And I, I got one little question. I'm gonna ask him a little bit later that I know for sure he's probably not expecting. But before we get into that, I wanna welcome Mike to 12 Faces Sober Speaks podcast. You can go ahead and introduce yourself you know, let us know a little bit of your background, you know, when you started, you know, and, and we, we'll go into it from there. So again, welcome to 12 Faces Sober Speaks podcast. Well, I appreciate you having me on 12 Faces and congratulations on that milestone, man. You know, that, that, you know, it, it's, it's funny once we get, we get clean, sober, whatever, you know, I like to say drug free because it sounds sexier to me, but, um, you know, it's amazing how life just starts to get better for us, you know, and, and it's like, you know, we're limitless, you know, there was no limit to when we were going, doing what we're doing, drinking or drugging. So why would there be a limit in recovery? You know, like it's the same thing, but uh, my name is Michael Fiori. I'm 38. I actually live in a treatment facility. So this is, you know, my room. Um, so I am CEO founder of Inspire to Inspire. We'll get into that a little bit. I'm also partner with the founders of the Sober app, Danny and Curtis. But um, as far as war story goes, I don't really speak about it. I lost, end of story, period. You know, addiction is undefeated. Um, what led me, you know, I'm, I don't believe we're addicts because we use drugs. I think we use drugs because we're addicts, right? Because there's many forms of addiction. There's gambling, there's eating. So it's not that specific thing. It, I, it's our thinking, you know, it's the way we, you know, process. Says. So my problem was perception, right? I was liked as a child, you know, I had, you know, charismatic attitude. I was a cool guy. And that became my drug. Like I wanted everyone to be my friend. I wanted to be everybody's friend, but a friend of everyone is a friend of no one. The reason being is because I would have to 
compromise my sacrifice, I had compromised my beliefs, my core values, make sacrifice to become whatever it was that you liked, right? So that means I had to manipulate. That means I had to lie. You know what I'm saying? Like if you thought I had something and I didn't have it, I was okay with that. If you thought I did something and I didn't do it, I was okay with it. Because what you thought about me was more important than what I thought about myself. Mm -hmm. Because I seen value in everything else but myself. So if you were good at something and I seen that people seen value in you, I wanted to be better at it was than what you were at. You know what I'm saying? But that's who you are. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, I would compare myself to everybody and nothing against comparing yourself to someone that's success, but you're selling yourself short because we were all created individually, right? The, the odds of life becoming is 400 trillion to one. You know what I'm saying? So even since birth, we've been defining the odds. And then you go through addiction, you go through all that, and we're still defining the odds, you know? But for me, the the it got to the point where all the lies and the manipulation, it got to the point where I looked in the mirror and I didn't even know who I was anymore. You know what I'm saying? So there was a long time I didn't even look in the mirror. I'd go in the bathroom, do what I have to do, and leave. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was always at war with the man in the mirror and the man with inside of me. You know, there was always that, that tug of war fight. And, like, I had to develop an ego. You know what I'm saying? And the ego was necessary because if I got you to believe something that wasn't true, my ego would allow me to be okay with that. You know what I'm saying? So I had to build the ego and then I had to build pride because I had to tell myself I could do something in the future without doing it, like get off the drugs or, you know what I'm saying? Start telling the truth. Yeah, I'll do it when it happens. You know what I'm saying? That great, like that infamous illusion where we think we're going to wake up one day and it's just going to get better. You know what I'm saying? I thought I was going to become famous, all, all this crazy because our addiction speaks to us in our own voice. You know what I'm saying? Like that one voice that we're used to. And what happened was, I started to isolate, you know what I'm saying? And the isolation is really bad because we're social beings by nature. And for me, my higher power is God. You know what I'm saying? That, that's who it is. That's who I walk with. That's who, you know, I could, I tried this my way for 20 years, man, and it didn't work. The only reason it's working now is because I found faith. And what is faith, right? Mm -hmm. I got two ways. Martin Luther King said, faith is taking a step without seeing the staircase. Right. So recovery is just like faith. And I compare it to Amazon. Right. Amazon, you got to buy the product first. You can't try the clothing on. You can't check the electronics out. You have to buy it first. You get the product. And then if it doesn't work, you could give it back. Recovery and, and faith is the same thing. You got to buy into it first before you actually get to see the product. But like even with even with God speaking, I didn't think I deserved to speak to God because I always did those foxhole prayers. You know what I'm saying? Like when I'm down and out, God, please get me out. Of this situation i promise you i'll change and then halfway out of the situation i'm already thinking about my next cop you know what i'm saying so it got to the point where i feel like i didn't deserve to speak to him but how could god answer prayers if we're not praying right so nowadays the things i ask for, and i used to I used to want God to snap his fingers, but you know, the only thing that gets like that is instant gratification, instant satisfaction. And that's what the drugs provide for me. Listen, in the beginning, the drugs were magical, man. Like they, they were, I ain't gonna hold you. Like they were great, they were fun. They were the solution to the problem. The problem is it just stopped working though. And when it stopped working, it was like that void. I couldn't feel it. So then I started trying other things. So I Chaos became my drug for a while. I was, listen, I'm great at fucking shit up. I am a, a master of destruction. But if we could break something down, though, we could build it back up because we are the problem, but we're also the solution. And this recovery thing is a choice. And once we understand it's a choice that we can make, because for a long time, like, I, I don't, I don't think we're broken. And that's just how I look at it. Because broken means something needs to be fixed, right? The things I need, the depression, the sadness, even to have, you need healing from that. You can't fix depression. You can't fix that. You have to heal from it. And I started to realize my perspective started changing when my mom passed away. And we'll get into that for a second. But like, we need healing from that. Like, you can't change the weather with your mind, man. Like, you got to sit through the storm. And especially like early in recovery, like that, we, that's hard to sit through it. Like, we give up on ourselves way too quick. But to get back to our addiction, all it is is a magician. It's a trickster. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it, it uses our best qualities and makes us think that we need it in order for us to bring it out. And I'm going to tell you why we don't need to be given recovery. And I realize this. It's already inside of us. Our addiction has been giving us the blueprint our whole lives. Like I'm, I'm, I'm blessed. You know what I'm saying? I, I appreciate my addiction. I appreciate these 20 years because because of that, I'm walking the life I'm living and we'll get into that. But what I'm saying is everything that we need in recovery, we've been using in our active addiction. 
or drinking or whatever, grit, right? Grit is doing something you don't want to do. We didn't want to run our lives into a ground, but we did it anyway, right? Determination. When my first drug dealer didn't pick up, I kept calling until I got one, right? Motivation. When I woke up and I didn't have money, I still got my drugs, though. You know what I'm saying? Critical thinking. I knew what blocks I couldn't walk down because I owed people money. I knew whose bags I could skimp because they don't weigh this shit out. And then the last one, the one that we don't think we have, courage, right? And you know what I'm saying? You're, you're a vet and I appreciate you for your service. But war, uh, soldiers go to war knowing they could die. That's courage. Putting yourself in a situation knowing you could die. We put drugs into our body knowing it could kill us. So now after everything I just said, if you still don't think you got recovery in you, now let's keep it a buck because I, I I keep it 100 with everybody. Like maybe you're just not ready. But what happens is when I would say I was ready for this and I wasn't ready, what happens when we lie to people? They stop believing us. What do you think happens when we start lying to ourselves and say we're ready to do this when we're not ready? We stop believing ourselves. And that's what happened to me. I, I, I wouldn't break promises to myself. I do. Listen, my life for a long time was I'll get clean on Monday. Right. So Friday comes, I get the paycheck. I get high the whole weekend. I'm up all weekend doing coke, whatever. Monday comes. I, I, I can't go get clean. I need some sleep. Right. Go to sleep. Wake up on Wednesday. Friday's coming back up. I want to get high again. So that, that was my whole process. Like even with the this is how crazy, smart, talented, creative, intelligent we are. Right. Even in my active using, I would get a job. I worked in like hospitality, bacon, you know, jobs that are easy to get cut and cold cuts. Right. I would get a job and set up an interview for another job two weeks after just getting a new job, knowing I was going to get a paycheck, get high and get fired. So I would have another job to keep my addiction going. You know mm. what I'm saying? Like that's how invested we get into this and recovery is so much less work. You know what I'm saying? It, it really is simple. We just complicate shit. Like it's our thinking, you know what I'm saying? Like, so when my perspective changed, so I, Last time I used any kind of illicit drug was June 12th of this year. I was, I'm in a program that I detoxed off of methadone, no, right? So I detoxed, I got off of methadone on November 3rd of this year. So that's when I, I, I call myself drug free on November 3rd. On Thanksgiving though, my mother passed away. So pink cloud didn't happen for me. And my mother was my best friend. She understood the disease. My father was in heroin. Had needles, got HIV, he died of AIDS in 09. He passed the virus on to my mother. You know what I'm saying? So my mother lived with it for a while undetected. She beat three cancers. And I, I had to make the conscious decision to come back to this place that I'm in right now eight months ago, knowing if I left her, she was going to deteriorate at a quicker rate, you know, and, and I was going to lose her. And I, all I kept saying was like, Ma, you got to fight. You got to fight. You got to at least let me get drug free at least. And she did that for me. But what I realized is, and this is why God's so good, and I don't question, I don't question his wisdom. I don't ask why no more. And that's big for me because I was the one that had the answers to everything, bro. You know what I'm saying? But I had all the answers to all the wrong questions, right? So like, the, I'd rather question my answers and answer my questions, you know, but it, I don't, I question myself, but I don't doubt myself these days. I question my why, you know, like, why am I doing this? Why am I thinking this way? The reason I'm so vocal about what's going inside of me is because I know that when I stay in between these two ears, with my thoughts, I'm in trouble. You know what I'm saying? So I got to let it out. Like, I believe our stories are our weapons of mass destruction against our disease. That's how we expose our disease. Like, the opposite of addiction is not sobriety. It's not recovery. I get to speak to hundreds, make thousands of addicts, right? And I know addicts that took the drug out of their life, but their lives are still unmanageable. They can't hold a job. They're cheating on their spouse. You know what I'm saying? Like, me, recovery is a mindset. It's a lifestyle. You know what I'm saying? So like for me, my recovery identity is not the amount of days I have clean. That's a, that's real dangerous for me because of my ego. Because what could happen is I could deal with something in the now moment, right? And not want to do recovery. And my ego would be like, well, you got X amount of days clean. You don't got to do the work today. And then my pride would kick in and be like, yeah, you don't got to do it today. You could do it tomorrow. So like vulnerability is like living in the now moment. You know what I'm saying? Making mistakes and being okay with it. But like mistakes become lessons when we have passion in it, right? Say kids with video games or women with makeup, or even if you're someone that first started shooting up IV or smoking, whatever it was, at first you weren't good at it, but the mistakes you made, you learned the lesson because you had a passion to get high or you had a passion to play video games or you had a passion to do makeup. So the passion has to now turn into recovery.
You know what I'm saying? That's the only way because when when we're hit with pain, I think pain is our ally, right? Like look at plants, right? Plants grow from underneath ground. Water is needed to help them blossom, right? The way we grow is from within inside. The water or our plant to blossom is pain. Like it is our ally. Like things aren't happening to us. They're happening for us. And when you realize that things are happening for you, because God sees things we don't see and he hears things we don't hear. So when things are removed out of my life today, there's two things that happen from it. I either see how much more effort I need to put into it that I want it, or I see that I really don't want it. But what God and, and faith has allowed me to have was I appreciate what I have. It's about having what you, it's about wanting what you have, not having what you want. You know what I'm saying? But once you're able to master what you have already, more comes into your life. Like life is funny. I used to need you to believe in my dream in order for me to believe in it, right? Now that I am the only one that believes in my dream, more people believe in it. It's crazy how life works. So when my mother passed away on Thanksgiving, I used to get high the thought of her dying, right? I wasn't self-sufficient. I lived off my mother, you know what I'm saying? She was my plan B. But when you have a plan B, I feel like we don't go hard enough on plan A. So like once she passed away, all I had was plan A and God knew I was ready because once he took her, I had to stand up on my own two feet and find myself. And I used to never say I love myself. I would say I like myself because it was a cop out. But loving yourself means you're making a commitment. You know what I'm saying? And there's no start without a commitment. There's no finish without consistency, right? So like that commitment to myself, I was scared because I couldn't rely on myself. I didn't trust myself. I didn't see myself have any worth or value. You know what I'm saying? I, I had shame. I had guilt. Like the thoughts would come in my head and be like, yo, listen, just be a junkie. That's all you're ever going to be because I would look to other people for my value. And what that is, is an expectation. And expectations lead to disappointment. Like no one is ever going to give us the value that we will give ourselves. And that's why this is a us first type of thing. Like if you can't, if you don't, like I give trust to get trust. I give love to get love. But what I do for like, for my, my purpose, I don't do things for a thank you because that's an expectation. You know what I'm saying? What happens if I don't get that thank you? I'm not going to, I don't look for validation. I love it though. Don't get me wrong, but it's not what I need to keep me going. You know what I'm saying? Like when I do things for people and they want to give something back, I'm like, no, pay it forward. Because that's what inspire to inspire is. I'm already inspired to inspire you. And then you inspire somebody else. That's where greatness comes. It's not about being the best at anything. Because I realize in order to be the best at something, that means everybody else got to fail. You know what I'm saying? Like Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan was the best. Look at all the greatest athletes that didn't get to win because of Michael Jordan. You know what I'm saying? That they failed at reaching their championship. So like, I don't want, I want to just be better than I was yesterday. Right. You know what I'm saying? And then I want you to be your best. And then we be the best together. And that's what inspired or inspire is. It's about pushing each other. Cause real friends are going to challenge each other. Real friends are going to tell you what you need to hear, not what you want to hear. And the codependency, this is just my outlook on it. We don't owe nobody shit man, especially in active using, because this is where I was at with it. I would help people that were down and out, not because I cared about your well-being, because I wanted people to look at me as a nice guy. You know what I'm saying? That's why I help. So the code, if, listen, my loyalty got an expiration date these days, but I'll keep the door open because God never wants us to turn our back. But sometimes we got to move forward. Like there's going to be people we can't take with us on this path. I don't look to be understood. You know what I'm saying? Because again, that's an expectation. You know what I'm saying? Expectations lead to disappointment. But there's one expectation that we can definitely count on that won't lead to a disappointment is our addiction is always going to be with us though. You know what I'm saying? Good times, bad or indifferent. So now we take the drug, the drink, out of our life our addiction ain't gonna stop though that's where the cravings the triggers you know what i'm saying the doubt doubt to me is because i'm not used to winning and my addiction is gonna make me it's gonna meet us on whatever spectrum we're at right so if i'm successful it's gonna make me feel like i'm not successful enough if i'm being lazy it's gonna make me be okay with being lazy you know what i'm saying it's very manipulative it's very cunning and the only way to expose it is by telling your story because our stories lie in what we overcome though not what we've done because who we are and what we did are two different things. I could be a bus driver for my occupation. When I go home, I could be a father, I could be a brother, I could be a mother, I could be a sister. So what you do and who you are are two different things, like facts and truths. I realize they're different. Fact is, you and I are speaking right now, right? Fact is that I did steal from my mother while she was dying. Fact is that I used to cut up cocaine and cry because I didn't want to sniff it, but I sniffed it anyway. Fact is, I used to have to hide in between cars because I owed people money. Fact is, I got my ass jumped because I owed people 
people money. Facts. Truth is, though, when we do recover, and when you make your facts your truths, you're not, you're not going to be able to overcome every, anything. Like, today is called today. It's not called tomorrow, and it's not called yesterday. It's called today, right? So if you live in the now moment and you want it, your past sucks, I got something for you. Tomorrow, today will become the past. So if you want your past to start getting better, we have to make today better. Because this is all we got. You can't live two days at once. Right. All we have 100% control over is our work ethic in this now moment. You know what I'm saying? In this now moment. It's like life and recovery is an uphill fight, right? We're walking uphill. And when you accept that, what happens when you trip walking uphill? You fall forward, right? What happens when you trip going downhill, though? You fall and break your ass. That's trying to make life easy going downhill. And that's what I used to try to do. By trying to make shit easy, I made shit harder, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I would look, like, even when I would wake up and get the little bit of a sneeze or a little bit of a yawn. I automatically thought which one was hitting me. So then, the, you know what I'm saying? The mind is crazy, dude. Like, we, uh, we don't even know how strong the mind is. Like, the subconscious mind is where all the money's at. So for what I do is I journal. Journal is a big part of my recovery. Like, you ever write something and then reread what you wrote and be like, yo, that don't even sound like me? Because that's the, that's like our peripheral vision. That's everything that we've been going through. It's been picking up, but the conscious mind's like tunnel vision, and that's us getting high. You know what I'm saying? We're only focused on getting high. Like attention and focus to me are two different things too. Focus, you're putting all your attention on one thing, right? Attention means you're aware of everything that's going around you. So I would rather heighten my attention than heighten my focus because the drugs are not the problem. The drugs are just a, a hurdle for us to get over. So to see how strong we really are you know what i'm saying like this is a journey it's not a destination i used to think it was if i had the right girl if i had the right job if i had the right this i was in recovery my life was getting better but what happens is when you attach yourself to your identity outside things and lose them then where's your identity you know what i'm saying like my 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 recovery identity is not my clean days it, it, it's a dangerous place for me to be very dangerous but like when we account a pain, there's two things that could happen, though. We could get wounded or we could get wiser. Like, the more we endure, the more we should be getting wiser. Like, I'm going to start getting paid for the shit I've been through, though. You know what I'm saying? Metaphorically and literally, bro. You know what I'm saying? I got 20 years of pain and suffering. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to start getting paid for that shit today because pain's inevitable, right? So now I'm going to use it. I'm going to flip the script and I'm going to make a positive. This silver line and everything. I'm going to tell you how, right? Why do we love success? Because we hate failure. Why do we love happiness? because we don't like sadness. Why do we like the warm weather? Because we don't like cold weather. You know what I'm saying? Why do we like to win? Because we don't like to lose. So understand that if you could feel loss, sadness, cold, that means you could feel the opposite. Because if happiness was something that we all could have all the time, would it even be happiness then? You can only know happiness because sadness is in the world. So if you could feel one end of the spectrum, understand that the other end is waiting for you. And hard times used to last right used to last longer than they needed to because i got high on top of things so the hard times would never dissipate you know what i'm saying but what i realize is that we have to sit through these things but joy is right around the corner as long as we don't pick up you know what i'm saying like getting high used to be the answers to things right so i'm gonna ask you then what is the question you know what I'm saying? Because I can't come up with a question where getting high is the answer, unless the question is how you want to ruin your life, how you want to lose your loved ones, how do you want to hate yourself? Those are the only questions that I could think getting high is the answer to. Mm -hmm. That's deep. So um, now, this the inspire to inspire. Like, how did that come about? I mean, it, right, so it, 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 you, it, you. You sound like you you have a, a a good reason as to why, but but what what is it like? What what is the the goal, the mission statement for it? So the 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 mission statement I have it around here somewhere, but the I actually came up with to see this is my second run around in this program. Right. So um, the first time around, you know, like like I said, I got to get paid for this shit. Right. Metaphorically and literally. But um, what happened was I realized I was 36, no career, no money, no nothing. So it came to the point was like, what do I know? They say you do something an hour a day for five years. You're a master at it. Well, I was a drug addict for 24 hours a day for 20 years. So I must be a Shaolin master. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, but like. It, it, it's all I know, you know what I'm saying? It, it's it, And God puts us through tests, right? Like first life, 
Life is like a test, right? First you get the test, then you get the lesson. It's not geometry class, right? Where you get the lesson and then the test. So first you get the test, but success to me today is gone. And I don't use the word failure. My self-talk has changed, right? So, but going from failure to failure without losing enthusiasm, that's success, not the score on the scoreboard. And I could tell, give you a read, like I'm a, I'm a sports guy, right? So the Giants played the Patriots one year when they were undefeated the last game of the season and they lost by a couple points, right? But they knew they could beat them. They wind up playing them in the Super Bowl, the biggest game in the year, and they beat them because they took that L, but they seen they were able to win. Like life is going to kick our ass. It's going to kick our ass and it's going to beat us while we're down. But I've been jumped before, right? So when I would get jumped, people were kicking me on the floor. I wouldn't fight back because then the, the beating wouldn't be as bad. Sometimes when life is beating us up like that, we can't fight back. Just stay there and let it get through you and then move on and then learn the lesson from it. But I did find this in my mission statement. I'll read it real quick, right? Right. So Inspire and Inspire will help fellow addicts worldwide fight our disease known as drug addiction. Our foundation is and always will be the ability to identify with feelings such as pain, desperation, and despair. Everyone here at Inspire and Inspire can identify with the stress and grit it takes to fight this battle every day, day in and day out. We encourage our fellow addicts to share their struggle and stories. By doing so, they will experience humility, which will lead to self-respect. By becoming the conduit between addicts worldwide, we will be able to give addicts a different battle plan against our addiction. Inspire to Inspire will become a fellowship for all addicts stranded in recovery purgatory with no place to go. So yeah. that that's basically the mission. You know what I'm saying? And there's a vision. You know what I'm saying? The vision is more like to other things. But it, it, it's really just like NA and AA save lives, man. They do. But my focus is on the ones that don't go there because a lot of us don't go there because of assumptions. You know, some of them are like cults, some of them. And I'm not with to take the cotton out of your ears and put it in your mouth type of thing. I honestly believe the addict with the needle in his arm should have the same voice as the addict with 20 years clean. We already got our voice taken away from us from society. Why are we doing it to each other, though? You know what I'm saying? Because the addict with the needle in the arm or still drinking or whatever it is can make the person with 20 years years clean remember that pain and desperation because remember pain and desperation turns into passion eventually you know what i'm saying so like you they can and then the one with 20 years clean could give hope to the one with the needle on his arm that your life can get better you know and that's just there's no ceiling with inspire inspire we're going to be open sober nightclubs sober barbershops sober tattoo parlors you know what i'm saying we're gonna we're, we're, we're that wave we're that wave that's coming like the world needs us because we could teach the world a lot. We could teach you what happens when you don't deal with shit properly. We could teach the world what happens when you think you could do this yourself. And a world that is broken, not healing, there's a, this world is broken right now. What better than to have people that don't judge each other? Because once we get in recovery, we don't judge each other. Mm. No matter what you did, you could tell me what you did, and I ain't going to judge you because I've done some shit too in my life. And then the second thing, the most important thing, that unconditional love. Because all my relationships were transactional. When I was getting high, it was, what could I get from you? What could you get from me? Bang, bang, bang. It was never any substance in it. But when we get in recovery, it's that unconditional love. Like we're the ones that need to come and fix this world right now. We're the ones that need to bring that compassion. You know what I'm saying? And that, and that's just the start of inspiring. And that's why I love it because it's not mine. I might, agree, I might be the founder, I might be the CEO, but it's all of ours because the connections is the opposite of addiction. Like I need every addict. I need it if you're getting high, if you're sober, I need your talents, I need your passions. I don't even need to know what it is. I need it because the platform I'm building is so you can put your passion out there. You can put your stuff out there because we feel like we lose our window of opportunity with things because of our addiction, because of the time that we think we wasted, right? But my thing is you have to have your passion present in your life. It doesn't have to be your occupation, but it has to have its place. The soul needs to feel that joy. You know what I'm saying? Like we need it in our lives. We need it present. So that's just the beginning of what inspired and inspire us. And what I love about, like I keep saying, is like, I'm the architect of this story now. Like I write this shit now, right? So like, I'm not even trying to build a skyscraper. I'm trying to build a star scraper because there is no limit when it comes to us. So I need everyone to come on board so we can build a star line, fuck a skyline. Let's build a star line. All right, I wanted to uh, add on <clears throat> something you mentioned. I was actually in Phoenix <laughs> across the street from the Super Bowl that year. That, okay. was, that was in 2008. 
yeah, my uh, the person I was engaged to at the time, her her aunt lived literally across the street from the well. I don't know what the name of it is now, but University of Phoenix Stadium. But I was I was literally okay. in Phoenix when they had, when they had that Super Bowl. Now, um, I think that you know one thing that you you had pointed out earlier that that really like hit home was the idea of like getting up in the morning and not taking a look in the mirror. Like, and that, that, that reminded me of Phoenix because there was the, the, towards the end of my drinking, I, I didn't care about like my grooming, you know, this was the early stages of me growing my beard. So I, I wasn't going to the barbershop. And if I did go to the barbershop, I didn't, I didn't touch it. And, but I, I was ashamed to look myself in the eyes because of the, because of just the overall of what was going on in my life, you know, post-military, uh, being able to, or not being able to adjust to, as, as we would say, the civilian life, because, you know, we, we were programmed to be this robot and, and, and to go in there and, and, and basically have somebody tell you what to do from the time you, you show up to work until the time you pretty much go to bed. And if they wanted to, they can call you in the middle of the night. And so that stood out to me the most because I, I think that we, we have a tendency of, like you said, not, not necessarily holding ourselves accountable and then being able to sit there and look in the mirror and, and know like, okay, I done messed up for X, Y, and Z, or I need to do better for X, Y, and Z. And usually it, it, it finds you, you know, you find yourself back in that same situation because you're yep. not truly having that heart to heart with yourself. Um, another thing that, that stood out too is, and I'm glad you touched on it, is that you know AA and NA works for the individual. It's not, it's, it's not so much, and I'm not knocking it, you know, don't go or do go. It's more or less of a choice. But like you said, to hear other people say how it has worked for them is good, as well as someone like myself who has been in the doors of NA, not because of an addiction, but that was a stipulation of the rehab that I was in. And so, okay. but not taken away from it, I still respected it because it was something different. And to hear, the, I ain't gonna say the same, but some of the same similar stories was in that same room as AA as it was in NA. But like I said, I don't, I don't, I don't knock nobody for the, the choices that they make because it is a choice. It, it is more or less of, okay, what is, what is going to work for you? What is going to keep you sober and what are, or clean or, you know, and what is going to keep you on that path? Because like I said, not everybody, and I guess it's the, the good thing about it now was that you, you have, there's multiple acts, you know, access to different things compared to, you know, before the pandemic where they, you know, everything was like Zoom calls were like, that was a small fraction. And now you can host a Zoom call anywhere on the world and, and be able to fellowship regardless. Mm -hmm. So I think that's important. Now, uh, tell us, tell, tell, you know, share, share with the um, with the audience your experience as far as uh your trip to california how was that so, and what was something yeah. that you did while you were out there being that i am so, from, from san diego yeah. so it's always cali love so i like yeah so a quick a quick run with the numbers right they only say like three percent of us making and stuff like that so i found some numbers that they don't like to tell us right so it usually takes two to five programs for an addict to get clean. And out of those addicts, 75% of them complete one life achievement, right? What makes the numbers drop is they start to factor in people with real psychological issues. Mm -hmm. Then it takes 10 to 15 programs. California was a life achievement for me. I've always wanted to go to California since I was a child. I don't know why. And I know why now after going there, you know what I'm saying? But like, I've always, my heart is always been there you know what i'm saying and it, it, it was it was crazy because i used to never be able to go because of my addiction you know what i'm saying i would google how to get plug drugs on the plane and how to do this and how to do that because i, I was in a methadone clinic and they wouldn't give me the bottles because i wasn't giving clean urines but 
my addiction is the reason that I went out there this time. That's what I'm saying with perspective, right? You know what I'm saying? Like how you look at anything is how you look at everything though. You know what I'm saying? How you see yourself is how you think people see you. So if perception is your thing, how you see yourself is how you portray yourself. How you portray yourself is how people perceive you, right? So California, like I found myself like, uh, crying on the plane going out there and i'm thinking you know maybe it's because my mom's not here my life is substantially better without her here i wish she was here and then i realized like it's like an athlete winning the championship or uh an actor winning you know the oscar or whatever it is grammy with a musician like i started to see that i'm winning dude like my hard work is paying off it's like i won the championship so i was crying to the point where the homie next to me was like yo you all right i'm like yo i'm better than all right you know what i'm saying so now i'm flying in and i flew over i think it was newport beach maybe because I, I landed in santa Ana, right so I'm flying over to Newport Beach and I get this euphoria. I start hearing red hot chili peppers in my ear. Like it was like surreal, right? So I landed in, in Cali and my, my sober app partners, Curtis and Danny out there, we'll get into that a little bit. But um, so I land, right? And then I get there and it's like a God moment. You know what I'm saying? Like I felt like I was floating when I was walking. You know what I'm saying? Like the only way I could explain a God moment is everything feels like it's together. It's in sync. You know what I'm saying? The mind, the body, the soul is all together. Because for a long time in my heart, I wanted to stop doing drugs, right? But my brain had a different, you know, my, my thoughts were different. Like there was never that connection, right? In Cal <laughs> excuse me, in California, the whole time I had this connection. So I was originally going out there for the Sober app launch, right? But when that happened, uh, you know, my popularity is picked up on social medias, you know, TikTok. Right? So someone had reached out and wanted me to stop in Indiana. I spoke in Indiana. Flew me first class, by the way. There was a time I couldn't get a give a penny, take a penny from Dunkin' Donuts. You know what I'm saying? I couldn't get a dollar or something. People flying me first class across the world. That's why they say it's a life beyond your wildest dreams. So I stopped dreaming when my life could be sober because I'm selling myself short. Like, I don't know how to do this. I know how to fuck it up, though. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what I want, but I know what I don't want. Like, the, the past is so abstract. You know what I'm saying? Like, harness it. We, like, learn from it. The future's unwritten, and that's be a beautiful thing. It's a scary thing, but beautiful. The fact that it's unwritten means anything's possible. Stop trying to write your narrative. Stop trying to see 10 steps down the road and just see your next step. You know what I'm saying? Because then anything becomes the possibility. Because that inspire and inspire, we don't say impossible. We say I'm possible. You know what I'm saying? It's two words. But in Cali, it's a little different. Most of the places I'm asked to speak at, we're there. You know what I'm saying? It's in a facility. They want me there. So I, now I'm speaking in public. Huntington Beach, Venice Beach, Santa Monica Pier the day before the Super Bowl. Thousands of people walking back and forth. So the first time I go to speak in Huntington Beach, and this is, remember, our disease does not like that what we're doing right now because we're exposing it and we're helping people get clean. So the first spot I set up, I start speaking as an alcoholic drunk there. Every time I start speaking, he's yelling. So I got to switch my spot, right? I'm like, all right, you got that. I'm uh, I'm not that person no more. So I set up in another spot on Huntington Beach. The people didn't want to hear the message. Like, yo, why don't you take your speaker and go near the water? And you know how far the water is from the boardwalk, right? I'm like, all right, you got that. The third spot I set up, there's like some... Like I, 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 my, my understanding of God is for me to explain to you how he saved my life. It's not for me to preach to you and make you find, you got to find your own relationship. It's just for me to tell you how he saved my life. But then you got some people that preach the word and it's kind of like, you know what I'm saying? They turn people off by, it. you know, the, the, those real Jesus, legalism basically, because Christianity is not a religion. It's a relationship. You know what I'm saying? So like it, it, they, that that real choice was one of those type of people were there. And my speaker was louder than his. So I had to move. So now the fourth spot, I sat in front of the lifeguard chair. And listen, you know me, I don't got a problem with speaking. I was real discouraged. You know what I'm saying? Like I was down there. And this is where we, we have to win. We have to win. We have to step out of our comfort zone and we have to go through that uncomfortability. You know what I'm saying? Like for me, I, I had to start doing little things in order to beat the uncomfortable. I started waking up an hour early, even though I didn't need to do it because I didn't want to do it. You know what I'm saying? I started washing my dish as soon as I used it because I didn't want to do it. Like my laundry, I used to live out of a laundry bag, do the laundry, fold it, leave it in the bag and leave it like that. Now I do the laundry, I take it out 
credit bag. I put it in my choice. Like all these little things are very important because you can't just go into the gym and lift 500 pounds. You know what I'm saying? You got to go in and lift 20, 30, 40, 50. Like we need to start building ourselves up. You know what I'm saying? Like there's some called pinpoint clarity. I use it all the time. So like if you have a situation that you're dealing with, right? And you don't like the situation, think how the situation could get better. Then think of how it could get better than that and then better than that and keep going until you can't find a solution better than that. You just gave yourself a blueprint on how to make your life better without even knowing it. Real simple shit. So now I'm speaking, people walking by, people heckling, you know, young kids saying stupid shit and was so uncomfortable. And, but you know what happened? I didn't want to wake up the next morning and be like, you know what? I should have did that yesterday. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I'm, I'm not going to lose today. Like, I'm just not going to lose today. I don't care what I look like. I'm not looking to be on the Like, I'm going to win today. And sometimes winning is just not picking up the drug. You know what I'm saying? And that's enough. We get complacent though and think it's not enough at times because again, our addiction speaks to us in our own voice. But just the whole atmosphere, Cali, the warm weather, the palm trees, people asking you how you doing and actually staying there to see what your answer is. New York, people will step over you if you're dying. They don't give a fuck out here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so like it, it it was it was like just so surreal. Like I felt like I was home, dude. Like I really like leaving there was hard for me. But remember. I'm great at, we're great at starting things, especially me and not finishing them. Like, I don't want to be in my program right now. I really don't. I got everything out there in Cali. Doors have opened up. We got New Mexico lined up, Arizona lined up, Colorado, prisons, high schools, youth centers to speak at, Michigan, more prisons. And you know what I'm saying? Like, and it's God's testing me though. He was testing me. You know what I'm saying? To see where I'm at with his faith, because this is what got me there though. This process that I'm going through right now in this program, it's what got me there. So like, I'm real easy. Like you, we can't just give up on what gets us there just because our lives got a little bit better. So I brought my ass back here, even though I don't want to be here. I got a shower with sandals on. I got to put a fucking towel on the toilet seat. Some of these rooms got bed bugs. They got cockroaches. You got people in here for the wrong reasons. You know what I'm saying? I'm hated in this place. You would think it would be the opposite. You know what I'm saying? But I'm hated because not everyone in and it's the reality of the disease. Like that's what Inspire and Inspire is. Everyone has a contribution to our process, no matter what it is. Either they're going to show you a way you don't want to live no more, or they're going to show you a way that you do want to live. But everything that's going on around this is for our benefit, even if you might not think, like there's no such thing as a bad experience to me. Maybe in the moment though, but if you're able to look back, like they're all great experiences, if you could change your perspective and see that there's a benefit of everything that's happened it for us you know what i'm saying like we're created in god's image he don't make mistakes man he don't look how perfect this world look at the orange right you peel the orange it's already sliced for you you know what i'm saying look at look at like and everything that he creates works together but us he gave us free will so now you know we're a little different look at ants they build together bees make honey together birds flock together lions hunt together wolves travel in a pack together that's why when we get into uh, recovery the connections is the most important part it's you're the average of the five people that are closest to you so now you have to evaluate like if you betray me i gotta look at you differently I have to. And then I have to look at myself for the people I'm letting in my life, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is a, like I said, it's a journey. Like, it's a fall and get up thing, though. Don't make it a right and wrong thing. Because when you make it right or wrong, you're going to critique every step. You're going to critique everything. And we are our own worst critics. But how can we be cynical? We don't even know ourselves. You know what I'm saying? So stop being so hard on yourself, though. But Callie was like, it was... Like when I, I said it before, like I'm turning this shit up right now. When I say turn it up, I don't mean start adding everything to my plate because remember, our addiction is very cunning and manipulative. It can control us even in recovery. It always wants us moving. Even if we think we're fixing our life, it always wants us moving because we can't process that. It's another form of getting high. We're suppressing it. Like I realized you have to stop in order to move forward sometimes. Mm -hmm. Like, and that's true story. Like, so like what, what I learned was I'm going to turn this shit up. And when I say turn it up, I mean, when it comes time for discipline, because remember, this is 90% discipline, maybe 10% motivation, maybe, because we don't wake up motivated every day to do shit. But right. the discipline, you know, you're, you're a soldier. The discipline is always there, though. You could always have that present in your life. We need discipline in this, not motivation. If you're searching for motivation, it's never going to come. 
The motivation comes after you're disciplined. You know what I'm saying? Like when I'm at 50%, I give 100% of me at 50. When in the past, when I was at 50%, I did nothing. I would wait till I was at 100%. But what happens when you're at 50 and you don't give 100% of you at 50, you drop to zero. You don't go to 100 because the shame comes in, the disappointment comes in, the guilt comes in. Like our addiction is very good at what it does, man. Like it, we, we got bested by a better opponent. Like give the fight up though. Just surrender. But surrendering isn't giving up. Surrendering means you're going to give yourself the opportunity to fight, right? I have something called the OCA routine at uh, Inspire and Inspire. Open-mindedness, communication, accountability, right? So open-mindedness is just that your perspective could be wrong and someone else could be right. So take suggestions, right? Communication, what you and I are doing, but as well as listening. Listening is a form of communication. Accountability take accountability we did what we did and once you accept that you could forgive yourself but also at least humility right honor before humility pride before the destruction but forgiveness isn't a free pass though forgiveness means that you're going to work on whatever it is that you can fix remember we say a prayer accept the things we cannot change the courage accept the things we can and the wisdom know the difference i used to say that shit all the time and not even hear those words though i hear them now though so cali allowed me to see just a little bit, a microcosm of what I could do with my life if I stay true to the course. So right. staying true to the course was coming back to this shithole of a place, eating this shit food, dealing with people that, you know what I'm saying, that are beyond crazy. But you know what? I still appreciate it, though, because this place saved my life. You know what I'm saying? If my mother died, I probably would have been on the street. Because remember, I was self-sufficient on her. So, like, this place allows me to live here rent-free, save my money. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate the place. The place is magical. Whatever goes inside of it, though, is different. Right. And and and, and the thing, too, you know, I wanted to uh, share with you, just from my own personal experience, I, I've been in, uh, let's see, a few, I, I'd probably say one, I've been in a one rehab facility in Virginia, one, um, well, two in Minnesota, one in Minneapolis, uh, North Minneapolis, and in St. Cloud. And I was in a, as a, a church-based facility in Phoenix uh, called the Phoenix Rescue Mission. Okay. And I, in, in that last one, um, I would say, well, the one in Phoenix, you know, there was individuals in there because I was, you know, I lived literally on that street, like 35th Avenue. And I'm, I'm sure, like I said, if you go, that might be one of the places you guys might check out. But the the thing that, that got me is that like, because I was, you know, I still was getting paid from the VA. You know, these guys are like, why is this guy here? I, at the time I had a Chrysler 300. Why is this guy here? So now I'm a target. And mm -hmm. you know, people still in, you know, I had a pair of uh, some some cold blazers, some mm -hmm. Nike blazers, white and red ones that I have not replaced yet, but I will soon. But, <laughs> you know, I they they didn't. It was like as if they they knew like you like you don't belong here, but they didn't know my situation. So each person's situation obviously is different. They, you know, and even like when they decided they wanted to kick me out, somebody had stole, I had like a Cali t-shirt, I never forget it, it was like in graffiti, and the guy like had it on, like I worked in the laundry room, oh, wow. and I was like, where'd you get this shirt? I'm like, yo, man, like, where at in Cali? I'm like, did you get it at this mall? I said, because it's the only mall I know that sells it. Oh, no, I bought it here in Phoenix. I'm like, well, that's the wrong location. And Facts. so, but the thing that my point is, is that, there's going to be people that that don't like what you doing. You move the way you move, the way that these opportunities are there. But you got to continue to push the message, you know, and, and, and that's what I've learned. I the same thing. I had people like, you know, why? Why do you want to go back to school and get your master's degree? I'm like, I don't have anything else to do with my life. I mean, you and I are not too much a difference in age. I stopped drinking at, I think. 37, 36, 37 okay. is when I, when I, uh, Me too. Stopped. I and, stopped the drugs about 37. Yeah. And, and, but I, for me, it was, I, I, I had nothing, I had no, no, no else, nowhere else to go. No, no, nothing. So it was like, okay. And, and, and one thing I want to tell you before I 
go any further is I appreciate you, you sharing the information about your mom. And the reason why I say that my mom is still alive, but the same thing, my mom and I have a very good relationship. I talk to her sometimes it depends on the day and how I got things going on a couple of times a day. But she told me this one thing before uh, I had decided to go to rehab. She was like, what can I do to help you to get you out of your situation? Um, and I don't want to bury my son. Cause I'm the youngest, I'm the youngest of five. And I had, cause at that time I had just got, I think I hit for uh, a little, little over 15 grand. And so I was going to the casino, you know, I would spend a hundred dollars on a cab ride to go to the casino, either make money playing. I used to play, I still play poker, but not as much, but playing poker came back up hundred dollars that morning. My mom was like, we need to talk. So you need to figure out what it is you're going to do. And that day we went ahead and, you know, made the phone calls to make the arrangements, but not everybody has that, you know, there, there are people that are just, you know, they've exhausted all of those options mm -hmm. and they have to go out there and fend for themselves, make that decision on, okay, do I want to make these changes in life? And some do, some don't, some have the resources and some don't. You know what I mean? Because like I said, I, I was fortunate enough to go to rehab for free and but but not everybody has that that luxury. But so I guess for me to to share with you is that the it is the the importance of a parent. And and I don't know how I would feel knowing that losing losing my mother just because she was the main one who wanted to make sure that I was sober and it's been, it's been right there with me. So that's why like, anytime I get money, I'm throwing it yeah. at her because yeah. I just feel like she didn't have to take me in at 36, 37. She could have been like, you, you're on your own. Mm -hmm. And even, even like with now, like, you know, I can say it, not too many people know, but I, you know, right now, like I'm, I'm displaced because yeah, I'm in the process of having a house built, but, Okay. You know, my mom let me stay with her for roughly, you know, November, December of, of 2021 so that I can have the funds to put mm -hmm. up for a house. And so that that's where where I'm at yep. today. But I know that if I was still living in Jacksonville, still living in that townhouse, I wouldn't have been able to to be as responsible because I still had to pay rent and X, Y and Z. Yep. So but um, now let's talk about like. I, I don't even know how I got approached with the sober app. I sent them you. Oh, I you sent did? them your profile. Yeah. Oh shoot! See, I I had no idea. A lot a lot of the collaborators, uh, you know, the people that I was already associating with, or people that I seen. I remember seeing your story on uh, Life uh, Recovered, and then I read your story, and I was like, oh, he has a podcast. I sent him over. I was like, yo, reach out to this guy. Get him. There's a lot of people on there that like people I was associated with. But before we get into it. Just about my mom passing, why I don't get high about it is because she'll still be dead tomorrow, right? If I get high. And two, I gave everything to my addiction. It gave my father's death that was high at his funeral, it was high when he passed away. Like I refuse to give my mother's death to my addiction. I refuse to let my mother's death affect my recovery in that sense because that's how much she meant to me. You know what I'm saying? I understand grief is it, it, it's hard to deal with, but you know what? Like we honor the ones we lose by how we live today. I celebrate her life. I don't mourn her. I celebrate her. And times I cry and I wish she was here and all that good stuff. But you know what? She walks with me in every step. I speak to her more now than I did when she was alive. I'd go days, weeks without speaking. I don't go an hour without speaking to my mother now. So she's in here with me and she's in my steps with me. So if anyone is watching this and you lost somebody and you having problems, please reach out to me because I will change your perspective of why you're getting high. So now the, uh, the sober app, right? Why I love this so bad is for many reasons, right? Because there's a lot of addicts out there that um, can't go into treatment, can't go into recovery, can't tell their family because of job, live in a small town, you know what I'm saying? And the stigma associated with addiction just makes them feel like they can't come out with it. The Sober app has everything you need to recover. It has all the amenities, PDF books, audio books, podcasts like yours, tracking, uh, motivational speakers like myself in my section. It has um, sober products. It has education. It has recovery coaching. We're going to have virtual sponsorship. We're going to have the meetings on there. And then 
then like my section is the motivational speaking. Then there's something like conversation cast, like something like you and I, what I, you and I are doing. And then something called a morning meeting. Cause I had to learn the science behind addiction, right? I had to understand why I was telling people I could get off drugs, but yet I couldn't do it. Our brain chemistry rewires. They did a study with monkeys. They gave the monkey uh, drugs, drugs, drugs with food next to it. The monkey would die of starvation. Then they did it with another monkey. And before the monkey would die of starvation, they took the monkey out of cage that the monkey go through witch roll, right? Put that monkey then in society where monkeys that weren't getting high, then tried to give the monkey the drug again and it didn't do it. That's why his connections is the opposite of addiction and the people around you matter most. But the brain chemistry rewires. So the normal person's necessity is food, water, and shelter. The central nervous system is designed to keep us in a comfortable state at all times. That's why people don't work out. Once it gets hard, you got five seconds before your brain makes a decision for you. So you got five seconds, most of us, some less, to push yourself through it. So if you don't push yourself through it, our necessity becomes the drug. So every time we're uncomfortable, we go to the drug. Or uh, after like four seconds of oxygen deprivation, the brain tissue, we lose brain cells, right? What are, why brain cells so important? When a normal person, you hand them drugs, they say, no, that's it. It's no, they move on because they got brain cells. We burn hours, so we have to continuously tell ourselves no or say no. And what happens? Sometimes we don't feel like saying no. So like I started to do the research. So a lot of my morning meetings are like that with my personal experience intertwined. And then God blessed me with a way to speak. So I'm, I'm, I'm able to make things into layman's terms. I'm very analytical. You know, like the way I describe happiness, right? I live on the beach. I love Cali. I love the beach, right? So when water crashes, that sound is the, my favorite sound in the world. And what I realized one day watching it was when that water crashes and that sound, that happiness, you know what happens? It gets quiet because the water has to retract. That's life. That water crashes, happiness. Psh, then understand in times of peace, you prepare for war. In times of war, you pray for peace. So understand when you're in that moment of happiness, it's going to fade. Prepare yourself for it. So when that water attracts and it gets silent, when you prepare for it, that next wave might crash even louder next time. You know what I'm saying? So like that's that section. But the, the, the sober app brings everything to people that can't go to certain places. You know what I'm saying? And, and what makes it so exciting and what are, one of our main things is we're better together. That's one of our things. We are the sober. But what I love about it and what we focus on is every day that we wake up, me, Danny and Curtis, we try to give, you know what I'm saying, strength to the weak, to try to reach the unreasonable, try to give hope to the hopeless because we don't want parents to lose their children no more. We don't want children to lose their parents. We don't want friends to lose their friends and we don't want loved ones to lose their loved ones no more. So we brought it all together and everybody that's on the app is an addict in recovery. And you know us addicts, Addicts get addicts clean. Addicts keep addicts clean. You know what I'm saying? We we just don't like it when someone that hasn't lived a life says they know what we're told, how we feel. You don't know how we feel. You know what I'm saying? So it's a, there's more identific identification there. And there's so much content. There's so many more collaborators coming. And it's just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So, yeah, it's, it's definitely, like I said, we that wave, man. We that wave. And we coming. We definitely coming. Well, I appreciate you uh, throwing... <clears throat> excuse me, throwing me the assist. Cause like I said, I, I, um, you know, I spoke with both of them, you know, already and well, inter well yeah, I interviewed with them. I don't know if it's on it's sober uncovered. Did you do your sober uncovered yet? Or you just yeah. did the out the interview? Oh, um, there's two of them. There would be one that's the interview and then mm -hmm. they come back with a sober uncovered where it's like, you tell your story for a half hour. They ask a few questions. Yeah. I think they, Shit. I, you know what? I'm not even for sure. I just know. You know I, I just I know go I, check the sober app out. You'll find out if he did it or not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, most definitely. And um, so uh, let's see. I, I'm a, I'm gonna close it with this because, like I said, I I know for sure that that you've touched on a lot of information. Now, what what advice? would you share with someone that is in that small town that is struggling with addiction dealing with alcoholism and or having you know numerous run-ins with the law or problems within their family what is something you know that you would give them as far as like a jewel like that that, that would help them like just your your own personal experience in terms of how life is 
today? All right, so basically, um, so there's a quote that I live by, right? And uh, it's people that matter you know, don't mind and people that mind don't matter. And Oscar Wilde said, be yourself, everybody else is taken, right? So what I would, what I would recommend is do not let people judge you that has not walked a night in your shoes, let alone a full day. You know what I'm saying? Like we live people's not nightmares on repeat and we live them day after. I used to take drugs to go to sleep because my nightmares were better than the life I was living. You know what I'm saying? Like you're not broken. You know what I'm saying? There's nothing wrong with you. We're not bad people. We make bad decisions. You know what I'm saying? And the Bible says he without sin cast the first stone. You know what I'm saying? There, there's going to be people that judge us, and that's fine. But if they don't judge us on how we get up, then they got to kick rocks because your life does matter. Because when you don't live your dreams, you become the greatest story you never be told. That's why the cemetery is the richest place in the world. That's where books weren't written, music wasn't made, poetry wasn't made. That's where dreams go to die. You know what I'm saying? This is our moment in time. This is all we got. This is us right here, right now. You know what I'm saying? This is the only life we get. What I learned with my mother's life is temporary and life is fragile. You know what I'm saying? We're seasonal. You know what I'm saying? We will not get another opportunity at this. Make this your opportunity. And I get it. You know what I'm saying? Like, so it's hard, right? It's hard because we make it hard. You know what I'm saying? This shit is simple. We make it complicated. Get with people winning at this. And if you don't have anyone in your town and you can't find nobody, there's Zoom links we could give you. You got the sober app you got me you got kenneth there's people here that will walk with you and we don't want nothing in return we want you to live your life because when you get it you have to give it and when you give it you appreciate your journey that you did to get it and then you and then i'm able to keep it inspire to inspire i can't keep this shit unless i give it to you because when we speak to each other i learn things about myself i forgot or i learn things that can happen to me because they happen to you like like i said before there's only one of addiction is millions of us if we come together excuse the language we will fuck that shit up man and i want to live today no matter what i will not lose today no matter what i will not pick up because we always have another relapse we don't always have another recovery though this shit is killing us out there and the way the world makes this shit life seem fabricated with movies and people dying and coming back we lost the value of life you know what i'm saying life matters your life matters one life matters and if you need something i'm here for you mm, see this is the reason why I do this because I can sit here and, 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 and tell piece by piece of stories of my life, but I want to get people on here that has a great story and, and, and not to use your, but inspire to inspire. It's, it, that's what it's about is the, for me is, you know, cause I like, I have a, a background as far as like public speaking. I worked in radio, a master's degrees in communications, but initially it was hard to get on here and record and say, Hey, I'm struggling with alcoholism or PTSD and X, Y, and Z. But as you know, time went by, I began to get more comfortable with it and be like, you know what? It doesn't matter because mm -hmm somebody's going to understand it, regardless of if it's one person or if it's a hundred or a thousand, whatever it is, somebody's going to get it or somebody's going to be kind of like curious, like, dang, okay, this person looks like me, talks like me, and is able to get out what others are afraid to do. And that is just be open and honest with what mm -hmm. your program is. If we're struggling, you're struggling. Mm -hmm. having a good day you having a good day because like i said only you can determine what's gonna happen today and 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 so that's why if my lady go you know she'll go get mad at me because i'm missing her but sometimes i try to you know tell her like let's just focus on the now let's that's it. let's let's get this I, I can't, yeah because i'm like i can't think too far because I'm gonna start getting stressed out. I'm gonna get too worried. Like, okay, well, if I if I make one wrong mistake now, nah, let's let's just get let's get through the day. Let's take care of whatever business that needs to be taken care of for that day. Let's yep. keep my mind right and, and stay sober. And, and we'll That's get it. to that point. Because even like, even with the whole situation, I've been talking about getting a house for a minute and for it now to be a reality is is something totally different and to go yeah. from being homeless in 2015 
to now 2022 and, and about to be a homeowner. Mm-hmm. So things is possible. You know, 100%. And- I was picking up cigarettes off the floor not too long ago, eating at garbage cans, living on the train. You know what I'm saying? Like, that was my life. And not too long ago, like, my life is substantially better mm-hmm. in just three, four months. Like, and that's crazy. Like, when listen, when God moves, he moves quickly, though. You know what I'm saying? And it, it, and it's it's the spirituality side that you need. You call it whatever you have to call it. You know what I'm saying? Because the mind and body, we get that back quick, the, the outlook. The spiritual side it allows you to just let go and let God, so they say, in the rooms. You know what I'm saying? Like, it allows you to just be free. You know, if you don't have spirituality, please work on it. It's the only thing that gives you longevity in this. It's the only thing that gives you peace. You know, you have to believe that there's something out there working for you, something greater than you. Listen, something greater than you could be the suggestions that you get. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it could be anything. You know what I'm saying? But you have to have something where you're not alone in this, even when you are alone. Because remember, being alone and lonely are two different things. I was lonely in a room full of people at one point. Now I could be alone and I'm okay with that. Because mm. I'm no longer, I don't feel lonely no more. But mm. like, yeah, the, the the spirituality, it's it's pivotal, man. That's why I never had success. And that's why I am now, though. For sure. And Mike, like I said, thank you for coming on the podcast, sharing some deep words. You understand? Like you, I'm, I promise you, man, like, I guess sometimes it's, it's good to postpone, postpone. Facts. You, Everything you, happens you know, on his time. For sure. And um, so how can yeah. how can people follow you? I'm gonna put all the links and everything, okay. to yeah. whatever you got going. But so, uh, TikTok, it's Inspire the number two Inspire underscore. My uh, Instagram is Mike M I K E Fiore F I O R E one one eight. And you know, for now, those are the two major platforms. Facebook is really you know not. I really don't do too much on Facebook with those two platforms. But one thing I will say is the reason that there's more people at our funeral than our birthday is because people would rather see us on our back than see us on our own two feet. Mm-hmm. So you know what I'm saying? So get people in your life that want to see you on your own two feet and people that accept you for who you are. You know what I'm saying? Remember, floors do not depreciate our value. And I'll give you an example. There's a 1922 penny that has a floor that's worth $1,000. Then you get a penny that's made to perfection that's worth a penny. Mm. So perfection is an illusion. Stop chasing illusions. Start making your life worth it. Stop one step at a time. Prioritize. Like we do recover because we will recover because we can recover because this is what we are made to do. We were not born to be like that. You know what I'm saying? We were born to spread our wings. Demons only demons until you release them. Then they grow wings and fly and become angels. Release your demons, man. Release them shits. Right, right. And and like I said, we you definitely coming back on my podcast soon. Because it, it, like I said, it's definitely you 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 have some damn good information. And and, and I'm be honest, I don't even really cuss on this podcast, even though I oh, got. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. Brooklyn, it's man. not. Yeah. But listen, it's it's <laughs> it's just one of those things of like thinking in mind of like how how I used to be in radio to where it's like I refrain from you know using that. Oh, okay. But I had what's his name, uh, Alex. I had I interviewed Alex uh, from Canada uh, just okay. last Friday, and it was like, but I'm not knocking her though. But I was just like, <laughs> oh, I said, well, maybe I might just start cussing and just being myself because I, you know, I try to you know, keep. You it. know, it's the passion just comes out, and yeah. it's like I've spoken in churches before mm-hmm. and cursed, and and I, I'm like, I'm sorry, God, but you know, what I'm saying there's a difference in when how you're saying it, what you're saying, it, and to who you're saying it to. You know what I'm saying? So like. It's just, I'm a New Yorker, I'm a native Brooklyn kid. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is just how, you know, the hands and the talk goes sometimes. That's what's up. And um, we're going to go ahead and close it with that. Uh, okay. Again, um, 12 Faces of Sober Speaks podcast is, is you know, the, the platform, not only for those in recovery, but also, you know, to authors, entrepreneurs, I've had a professional athlete on there. I'm, I'm trying to work on Darren Waller for the Las Vegas hey, Raiders. that's a good guy. And you got to get the other guy from the Raiders, the, the lineman, Crosby. Yeah, Crosby. He's in, uh, a, he's in recovery too. Well, well, well I'll, I'll tell you a little, Jim, about one of those in just a second okay. once we hit the, the stop recording. But yeah, so definitely um, that my, my goal and objective is to, to get, get out the message and, and have others come on and share as much as possible. And this evening is, is no different. 
I am very thankful for the opportunity that Mike has put forth for me and, and not only, you know, and, and continue to inspire. And, and like I said, I, I know that the Cali crowd is tough. And, and like I said, I'm glad that you, you know, you shared that experience because, you know, I've been to Venice Beach as a teenager and, and, and seeing how, you know, like I said, people out there speaking. And like you said, the, the, the crowds can be really brutal. You yeah. know, so it's, it, you know, if you can make it out there, you can make it anywhere, you know, nice. it, it's far. Well, I know the New York got that, but in terms of like a lot of people have kind of broken out, you know, broken or gotten a name for themselves based off of just doing exactly what you did at those locations. So just keep nice. that in mind. Oh, no. But yeah, but I ain't gonna hold you up. Like I said, you can get this, uh, get this episode on YouTube, 12 Faces Sober, hit the like, subscribe comment do whatever you got to do share with a friend because i know for sure that the message and the guests that i have on here are helpful so again thank you for tuning in to another great amazing show and like i said just continue to work your process and take it one day at a time this is 12 faces and sober